So another really uh, popular thing to do for your kernel that actually helps out quite a bit is to uh, add an IO scheduler. So the IO scheduler, of course, handles uh, block operations. So we're going to the block folder of our um, kernel here. And uh, this you know, handles writing to and from the disks, the SD card, that sort of thing. Um, so you can see that we have some in here like CFQ, Noop, Row, uh, you know, and here's some over here, you know, uh, CFQ again, deadline, um, Noop, Row, test. These IO schedulers each have a different function and a different purpose uh, in their design. Of course, you can check out uh, online. A lot of people have written guides about the different IO schedulers and how they work and what they do. Um, uh, you know, here we see, uh, you can check out on XDA or, or abroad, but this one just uh, lists a lot of different uh, IO schedulers. And you can see, you know, it's a IO scheduler is sometimes called the disk scheduling, um, but just decides the order of block I input output operations. So. How do you share bandwidth for disks, that sort of thing. So we're gonna look at FIOP um, or FAIR input output uh, scheduler here. Let's scroll down till we find it. So FAIR IOPS, uh, the new IO um, scheduler here. So it's, it's, uh, it achieves really good benchmark. Um, it's supposed to la launch apps faster uh, but it can make your phone lag. So each IO scheduler has a different purpose and a different, uh, you know, set of advantages and, and disadvantages. So be sure to check those out and see if that's really what you need. Sometimes you just have to try them and see how well they work. Um, again, where you can get them, uh, you know, like I was showing you, Eliminator 74 has its kernel tweaks and a ton of IO schedulers in here. Um, you can get to that from my GitHub or from uh, you know, his GitHub there, either one that works for you. Um, definitely want to thank him for putting all this together. But so um, here we have, uh, you know, the IO SCED uh, configuration. And this is where you choose, remember that kconfig is where you choose which option you want. Do you want this option or not? So it's giving you the choice. A good way to think of kconfig is like the menu, all right? What are you going to order? And then once you order something off the menu, um, you know, the make file makes it. So you can look at examples, like here's one where I've added, uh, you know, a commit on GitHub for adding the op before to a kernel that I was working on. And again, if you're looking for something, you should always look on GitHub. Other people have probably done it before. So let's open up the kconfig IO sched um, in the block folder. Now there's a, a normal kconfig and then the IO sched and the, the normal kconfig is just pointing to many other options and then it says if they also want the IO scheduler option, then load that menu list. So <clears throat> here we see uh, the FIOPS, that's where we're gonna be here in a minute. But if we go to the top, um, if block menu IO schedulers. So if they chose to have IO schedulers, it's going to give you the choice for all of these. And notice um, default, oh, here's the default module. That's interesting um, for the test and then default Y for the rest. So um, if something is uh, in your config as a is not set instead of as a no, then uh, it will do whatever the default option is. And so these are default to be yes, we want to build them normally. Um, we're just going to copy this block over the IO sched. Uh, kconfig files are all set up exactly the same way. If you don't know how they uh, how they look or work, um, that might be a subject for another video. But you can always just copy and paste uh, what uh, what some other people have done here. But you also need to set the default. So you've given the option, hey, do you want to add the FIOP, and then you need to give the option, hey, do you want the FIOP to be the default? So again, uh, just like we saw in the governors where you had to set the options for the governor and then the option for the default. 
So if you've ordered something off the menu, then you need to know how to make it. And the make file has the instructions. What do we want to do? And the instructions are if they want to build that object, then um, if they chose that option to be a yes or a module or whatever, then you need to build that object. And so here we're going to add Fiat uh, IOSCAD. So if they said yes, we want it, then we're going to go ahead and build it. Uh, if we go to our out directory to our kernel objects and we look at the block directory, uh, we see all these objects that were built before when we built the kernel, and we see CFQ and and row and but we don't see is fiop so that's good and we'll take a look back here once we've built it to see that it did actually build what we wanted so we've got our menu our kconfig set up with our menu option of yes we want to build it we've saved our file to say yes we want to um we we have it in our make file we're ready to build that so what we need now is to actually take the C file, the source file, copy it, and we're going to paste it into our block folder. So now we actually have what we're going to build with. And again, you can get these um, online or, or from another kernel. So notice all these include blocks here. You need to make sure that these includes actually exist. Because if they don't, then when it tries to build them, they won't build. So notice this uh, blk.h is right here in the directory with us. Um, so that one does exist. All of these do exist because I've, I've built this before. But it's just something to be aware of when you're building. Make sure that these includes actually point to something that does exist. So <clears throat> we've got our source file in there. We've got our kconfig. We've got our make, make files all set up. But now we need to go to our default config or configuration file and say, hey, uh, we want to make sure to add this uh, fiat. Now, it was a default of yes, so in theory, it, it would build anyways. But uh, it's always a good idea if you want it to be in your kernel, you should, uh, you should say yes in your kernel config. So here we'll go down to fiat. You see it right here. So uh, notice that uh, you know the um, diffuse didn't line it up perfectly here for me, but uh, we have the default of row, and the default I/O scheduler is said in quotes here to be row. Um, so I can't just straight up copy the line over because I would overwrite this default row option. Um, so I just would have to make a new line. That's no problem. Um, so yeah, you you say which IO schedules you want to build, and then you say which one's going to be the default, and then you actually have to specify the default by name. So a little bit different than the governor in that respect. So let's go ahead and we'll just uh, grab this and copy it over. So we want config IO sched fiop equals yes. Here we go. We've got that in there. Um, technically, we could copy the fiop default is not set. But since it's not set, it doesn't actually have to be in our file at all. Anything that says is not set we could actually remove from the file just to make it smaller because uh, we just want these yeses that we see um, here. Or if you had a no or if you had a module. Um, let's see. Anything else in here? Uh, nope, that should be good. So we'll save that file and we'll go ahead and build it. So uh, we'll, uh, we could make clean here. We're just going to go ahead and make the boot image because we're just adding a little bit. We're not changing something that's already been built. So we're going to go ahead and it'll go through the process here. It should take about you know two minutes or so. Um, while that's uh, going on. Um, again, remember that just because it builds doesn't mean it actually works. So you shouldn't set the default to something you just added until you've tested it. Um, pretty common uh, problem to run into. So let's see. Starting to pick up now.
Um, let's see. Okay, we see the, the date and time here. Last modification, 847. And it's nine o'clock after nine o'clock now. So in a minute when we see that it should be a newer file. It's going through, it's building, building, and it's done. There we go. Uh, under two minutes, like I thought. We check our properties here. And sure enough, uh, it's now there's nine o'clock. We go to our kernel objects, we go to our block section, and we see that PIOSCED object has been built. So great. 